Keeping the focus on Ukraine and our new NBC News reporting that the Biden administration is concerned about President Zelensky leaving his country at this critical time to travel here to Munich this weekend. Joining us now is Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, a member of the Foreign Relations Committee and part of that congressional delegation here at the Munich Security Conference. Senator, you have such long experience in Ukraine, more so than I think any other senator, in terms of going all the way back to what was happening in 2017 and 18. Is it smart for President Zelensky to leave right now with so much at stake for his country and so many people within Ukraine, uh, Russian backers who could undermine him? I mean, President Zelensky's job is impossible right now because he's got to be doing 10 things at once. We've already seen the balance he has to be able to maintain between keeping calm in Ukraine, not collapsing the economy and his government, uh, while also getting his country ready for what could be a, a, an invasion and a need for an insurgency. He also uh, has to manage uh, this crisis internally while rallying the world to his side. I, I, listen, I, I don't want to give President Zelensky advice, but I do think it's important for Ukrainian leaders to be here in Munich. The entire world is here. Europe and the United States is here. And there are still some European countries that need to hear directly from Zelensky how dire the straits are and how badly he needs weapons and support right now. So uh, I, I know he's got to do both at the same time. He's in an impossible position. Well, there is always Zoom. We've all gotten used to that in good times and bad. Uh, Senator, have you seen any evidence on the ground that Vladimir Putin is really ready for a diplomatic way out, or is this a stall? I have not. I, from the very beginning, I, I really thought there was a low likelihood there was going to be any formal diplomatic path out of this crisis. Either Vladimir Putin was going to uh, invade at a just enormous, disastrous, consequential cost to his country, or he was going to realize that this wasn't worth it and back down. Because the things he's asking for in a diplomatic agreement just aren't possible. There's just no way that the United States, Europe, are going to give away any kind country sovereignty. It's up to NATO as to whether we want to enlarge or stay the same size. The Kremlin should never get a veto over that. And of course, his entire fear about NATO is founded on absolutely false pretenses. We are a defensive alliance. We don't present any offensive threat to Russia. We're never going to step foot on Russian soil. We are just trying to protect ourselves, and not just from uh, Russian aggression, but uh, NATO has been used most recently to protect against terrorist attacks against the United States. It's a defensive alliance. Uh, he sees it as something else, but uh, that's simply propaganda for his domestic audience. How concerned are you that the activity now in eastern Ukraine, the shelling of the kindergarten, all is aimed at providing a pretext for him to invade? I think it's been very smart by the Biden administration to make clear from the beginning that the Russians were going to uh, create this pretext, were going to create an excuse for their invasion. Uh, and I, I think the world now knows uh, to view very skeptically any um, events that happen uh, that are being blamed by Russia or his allies on Ukraine, uh, on Kyiv. So I think you're going to see uh, over the next 24 hours, some of these pretexts, some of these excuses for a Russian invasion. And as long as the West calls them out for what they are, it makes it um, harder for Putin than to use those as excuses to invade. He may be testing the West right now with some of these explosions to see if we bite. If we call them out for what they are, it just makes it much more difficult for him to go forward with this uh, in the way that he may have planned. And finally, should Secretary Blinken meet with Sergei Lavrov next week if Putin has not started to pull his troops back? I mean, I leave that decision to Secretary Blinken. I mean, you've seen this parade of leaders going to Moscow to meet with Lavrov, to meet with Putin. Those are wonderful photo ops for the Russians, but it doesn't seem to be changing anything on the ground. If there's an opportunity for a diplomatic breakthrough, of course, Secretary Blinken has to go and try to work that out. But I think um, Tony is smart enough to uh, be careful about making a march to Moscow that's just to bolster the public image of Putin at this moment of crisis. 
Thanks so much, Senator Chris Murphy from the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, part of a very large bipartisan delegation here from Congress, uh, led by, of course, Nancy Pelosi, also, uh, of course, Lindsey Graham. Munich has always been a bipartisan venture.